years in Guantanamo Bay, treated like, as if he was less than a human being, shackled like his brothers in an orange boiler suit. So we are privileged to have Martin, inshallah, a respected brother to address us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim I would like to begin by saying that there are some, there are some who feel that if they avoid such and such an action, they will avoid Cuba. There are some who feel that if they refrain from saying, from talking about jihad peace of healing, from talking and promoting Islam, from talking and promoting the deen, that they will avoid Cuba. There are some who feel if they want a bid or no bid, they will avoid going to Cuba. Well, my brothers and sisters, this is not true. You may end up in Cuba regardless of how you practice your deen, inwardly or outwardly, for the mere fact that your name is Muhammad or Yusuf or Dawood. Allow me to tell you what takes place in Cuba. Allow me to tell you what takes place under the hand of the American government and its allies. You will find yourself being tortured, both mentally and physically. You will find yourself being intimidated. You will find yourself being abused. You will see on a daily basis how they disrespect Islam, how they disrespect Islam and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I would like to tell you a story, a brief account of one brother who was taken to Cuba. He's over 50 years of age and he came from Bosnia. Well, originally he was from Egypt. He left Bosnia to go to Afghanistan to live in a more Islamic environment. Subsequently, when the Americans took over Afghanistan and they captured this brother, you would think that he would be transferred to Cuba with the rest or the majority of brothers. But instead, he was taken to Egypt. And why was he taken to Egypt? He was taken to Egypt so electrical punishment, electrical torture could be applied to him in order to extract information from his brother. When this brother finally arrived in Cuba, you could see what this had done to him physically. It had left his mark all over his body, in particular his stomach, which had caved in due to the adab, the punishment of torture in Egypt, and mentally he had lost his mind. If for the mere fact that you stand up for your religion in prison in Cuba in a way that the authorities do not approve of, you will be subject to the Earth Team. This is the five, ten-man team, depending on who you are and how much they fear you, because believe me, they do fear you. They fear you because they fear the religion of Islam, because they fear the truth, and they wish not for the truth to be exposed. You will find yourself being beaten, chained, dragged, and thrown into a room with or without your clothes or merely a pair of shorts in a cold room with nothing to sleep on, with nothing to keep you warm for X amount of time. You will find yourself 
in interrogation, being subjected to all kinds of questions which are merely and solely directed at a Muslim. The enemies of Islam do not discriminate against your color or your age of which country you come from. If you claim, if you claim to be Muslim, then you put yourself at risk and you put yourself in the firing line and you are, in brackets, a would-be terrorist. There are brothers there who have only the means, the only means of course they have for action is to go on hunger strike. I urge you all, and I say to myself, do not forget your brothers in Cuba in your dua if it's all you can do. But do not forget your brothers in Cuba Although the government, the government would like us to forget. Brothers and sisters, I say to you to look at me as an example that it is not about your level of Iman, or what you will and will not do for Islam, or what you profess to say, or what you do not profess or do not wish to say. If you are Muslim, you may find yourself where I have been. And I ask that we all learn from this lesson and this example. Jazakallah khair.